Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times where I explore food and recipes from times of hardship. Today I'm going to be making a recipe, actually baking a cake from this book called Pioneer Cookbook written by Ruth Stone. And this was very kindly sent to me by Carol. Carol, thanks again for sending this to me. I have made a vinegar pie, a desperation pie from this cookbook as well. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below. This would be an also a great time for you to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Okay, so the recipe I'm going to be making, it's called cold water cake. So when I was doing a little bit of research, I did find some other recipes for ice water cake. And I found that really interesting that they specifically specify that it's ice water or cold water. Now there might be a little bit of science behind this, the idea of that the cold water will prevent the butter in this recipe from melting so readily and that it increases a spongier or softer textured cake. So I don't know if that's actually true, but the proof will be in the pudding in the cake. <laughs> So this cookbook includes about four generations worth of recipes going all the way back to the 1800s and it does not include a recipe for frosting. So I'm going to make a frosting recipe out of this book and this is depression era recipes and this was so kindly sent to me by Catherine, a long time viewer since 2013. Catherine, thank you so much for sending this to me and I'm going to be making this recipe for seven minute frosting. It contains egg white, sugar, cream of tartar and water. So no butter in this whatsoever. So that should be interesting. So let's go ahead and make our cake. I have a Barbara Streisand song in my head and I have no idea how it got there. Evergreen, love, soft as an easy child. Why? Where? How do I even know that song? I don't know. Strange things, strange things. Okay, so back to the cake. Quarter cup of room temperature butter. One cup of sugar. Stir butter and sugar to a cream. Okay, good luck with that, good grief. So I've creamed the butter and sugar together and now we're going to combine our eggs. So we need to separate them. Prevent any undue accidents in terms of contaminating our Oh, I have a gadget for this. Just a minute. Da, 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 dun, dun. Traveling through time and space. I have a gadget for my egg yolks. So I picked this up while I was in Japan. This is definitely something they would not have during pioneer times, but it's fun to test out. Now this is an egg separator. So this is a little silicone chicken then it looks like it's pooping out the egg. So let me go wash this. So I would imagine that's the sort of Achilles heel of this item. Like how do you properly wash the insides of this chicken? Cause you're, well, I'll worry about that later, right? Right. Okay, first we're gonna crack the egg, which I already did. Which one did I just crack? I think it was this one. Oh yeah. Now these eggs have been sitting at room temperature because I've read that beating egg whites at room temperature is easier although it makes your yolk a little bit more fragile. So this is gonna be a real test for this egg separator. Oh, I got some shell in there, get out. And squeeze it by its wings and then suck up the egg yolk. Oh, it totally worked. It just disappeared in, in its butt. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna add the egg yolk back into here. Oh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> kind of just broke rather than just pooping out, but it did separate it. So I'm gonna rinse this out and make sure there's no broken egg yolk in there because I don't want to contaminate my egg white. Our egg white, I'm gonna put it into this big bowl and we shall do that again. Ooh, no go. Ooh, that egg actually smelled bad. Ugh, that's a bad egg. I've never had a bad egg before. Wow. So that was interesting. That was a store-bought egg. That was the first time I've ever gotten a bad egg before. They always tell you in the cooking shows, oh, make sure you break your egg separately. But of course I never do. But you do that just in case you get a bad egg. Our chickens, our backyard chickens, are on a laying hiatus. It's winter here. And so they usually slow down, if not stop, which is fine by me. But that was interesting. I've never had a bad egg before. It definitely had a bad egg smell to it. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. 
Maybe it had a tiny crack in it. I don't know. Suck it up. Wow, the white is just... Okay, white, separate. This feels wrong. I feel like I'm pulling the chicken's guts out. Okay. <laughs> Poop. Oh, that one worked a lot better. See? It's whole. So the gadget works. Chicken butt. Place it on there. Oh no. In my attempt to get you a good shot, I ruined a perfectly good egg. Okay. For my last egg, I'm just gonna use my hands to separate it because I'm tired of this. So it works, sort of. Is it worth it? No. Is it cute? Yes! Definitely. If you're interested in winning this, please check out my social media. I will be giving this little egg separator away. Okay. Now I've got egg everywhere. God. All right, let me go grab another egg. <laughs> now this is my favorite way of separating eggs. You take the egg and you crack it into something and you use your impeccably clean hands. And you just pull it away. Yolk. Now mix this together. Now we're gonna measure out our dry ingredients. We need two and a half cups of flour. Beep, 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 beep. One, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. One, two and a half. A half teaspoon of salt. This, by the way, is a Danish whisk. It was sent to me by Diana. Diana, thank you so much. And it's supposed to mix things with more efficiency. So we'll use that for the batter. And now that our dry ingredients are mixed, we're going to alternate adding the dry ingredients with our cup of cold water. So let me measure that out. And now we're gonna add some flour. Oh yeah, it does work really nicely. It really makes the stirring kind of effortless because it just kind of goes through it. My one question though is, how easy is this going to be to clean? Probably no worse than just a regular whisk, right? Okay, yeah, look at that. Super fast, okay. Now I'm gonna add some cold water. And the instructions say specifically a little at a time. Now add some flour. Look how fast that mixes, that's great. There is our batter. We're gonna set this aside momentarily. Now we're gonna take our three egg whites and beat these. It says to do it until they're well beaten. What does that mean? Not exactly sure, but I'm gonna just beat these up to medium stiff peaks and then slowly incorporate that into the batter so it gives it some more leavening. So I'm gonna do this by hand because this is the pioneer days after all. So here we go. Have you ever tried brushing your teeth or beating egg whites with your non-dominant hand? Fun little experiment. You'll see that your wrist dexterity isn't, you know, up to snuff, but it's good exercise. Kind of balances things out, right? This is well beaten, and I'm at the point of probably medium stiff peaks. Add that into here. Now let's see how well this does for folding. This is my first time using it for this technique, so it feels a bit awkward. I'm gonna use my silicone spatula. Yeah, that feels a little more comfortable for folding. So there are no baking instructions. I'm gonna bake these into two nine inch cake pans and I'm going to lube them up with some spray. I'm sure they didn't have this back in the pioneer days, but. We're gonna divide this batter between the two. Spread it all the way to the sides into a 350 degree oven for 25 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Okay, see you in a little bit. So the cakes have finished baking. They were in the oven for about 30 minutes. And after they cooled for about 10 minutes or so, I inverted them onto a rack to allow them to cool completely before we tackle the frosting. So the instructions say in a double boiler, combine two egg whites, which I've separated here, 
with one third of a cup of water, quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar, and one and a half cups of sugar. Now we're supposed to just beat this all together for about seven minutes until we get beautiful frosting. Set my stopwatch, start. Beaters were around in the Depression era, so I'm going to be using my electric beater. All right, here we go. So my stopwatch has 11 minutes, 50 seconds, but I did go upstairs to go get a new battery, so I'm gonna take off a minute and say that took about 10 minutes rather than seven minutes. But look at that, that's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's glossy. Some wax paper to keep my cake stand clean. Third of this beautiful frosting. Look how white it is in the middle here. Now we're gonna put our second piece of cake on top. Now we're just gonna top it with the rest of the frosting. I'm gonna do these little swoops. Give this kind of an old tiny look. I like it. So we're gonna take these pieces of wax paper away. They have done their job. So let me taste the frosting just on its own. Mmm. Definitely a graininess. The sugar is still present in its crystal form. It didn't dissolve, and perhaps that could have been avoided had I added the sugar to the water first and combined that until the sugar was completely melted to create more of a syrup. The directions didn't specify that. It just said put all the ingredients in a bowl over a double boiler and beat for seven minutes. So if I were to make this recipe again, or if you make this, that's what I would suggest doing. But it does make for a very pretty frosting though, doesn't it? Here we go. There it is. Okie dokies, artichokies. Let's give this a taste. It's kind of a yellow white cake. Alrighty, itadakimasu. The texture of that frosting kind of bugs me. That granularity, I can feel all those grains of sugar in there. But the cake's not bad. In terms of both texture and flavor, it reminds me of the cake of a crumb cake or a coffee cake. It has a little bit of denseness to it. It's pretty moist. The crumb texture is not as fluffy as a typical kind of cake. The flavor is butter because we didn't add anything to this in terms of a flavor. No vanilla, no almond. It just tastes very nicely of butter. Hmm. I think in terms of frosting, I think I would definitely prefer a chocolate frosting. The cake is so plain. I think it needs a little bit more pizzazz. Although this is a very humble cake, so I felt like the seven minute plain frosting was appropriate for this type of cake. But for hard times, this is actually a very good cake. Thank you guys so much for watching. Big thanks to Catherine, Carol, and Diana for their contributions for this video and for making it possible. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media to see how you can win the little egg separator. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>